Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the final word from Denmark 1, Republic of Ireland 1, Euro 2020 qualifiers. I'm joined by Peter from Footy Faithful. Check them out on, uh, how you can check them out? Twitter? On Twitter, all social channels and then the website's www.thefootballfaithful.com. So Peter's here to talk about last night's uh, one-all draw with uh, Denmark. A, a very positive result and, you know, that's the, the result we were all looking for was something positive and something to give us uh, I don't know, food for thought for the future. Can we play, you know, um, can we build on this type of thing? And we did, essentially. But uh, the lineup, what, what we talked about, obviously wasn't, um, it was the same team that played against Georgia. Were you surprised in any way? I know we picked uh, our own starting level who we wanted to pick and only the two wingers really were the difference. I think everyone knew that everything else was pretty much you know, set in stone, but were you surprised by McLean and Brady? Um, or... Maybe Brady slightly because I think Robbie Brady's in a kind of awkward situation that he's not in his best form, but it's understandable because he hasn't played much football after serious injury yeah. and he probably needs to play 15, 20 games and a manager except he's not going to be at his very best. But with Burnley fighting relegation last season, Dyche, Sean Dyche didn't really have the option to do that. So... You know, he, he one sublime touch at the start, a good cross in the second, but apart from that, he does look rusty. So I'd say that was the only one. I think on form, most of us probably wouldn't have put Robbie Brady in there. Yeah, you know. So. But if you go back a year ago, Robbie Brady would probably be one of the first players on the team yeah. before he was in. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So you can kind of see that aspect to it. Um, to me, like I love Robbie Brady, and I think we'd all love to mm -hmm. see him get back to that level that you, that you're speaking of. But like. He is probably, you know, when he's on form, I, I could be our best and most creative player in, in that aspect to set him up, you know, mm -hmm. set up goals, crosses, stuff like that. He had one nice pass now. I think it was out to me clean. He mm -hmm. slipped and hit a shot, but that was, just kind of shows his intelligence. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It looked like the defender could have got to the ball, but he just seems to have this, you know, knack of his, his technique's very good. Um, But McLean, we, we, we were surprised by. I kind of had a, an inkling that he would start. I think you actually called on the starting 11 show that he'd probably start. I don't think I don't think you were calling for him to actually start, were you? No, I said he'd start because I thought Mick would go with his kind of experienced heads. I didn't yeah. think it was really the time to... O Odeuda is, is relatively untested in that kind of competitive level internationally. Yeah. Um, he hasn't played that many big qualifiers. Mm. I think Serbia was the only game. Did he start, didn't he start against Serbia? I think I that was remember. the only he started a, He's played a couple, but you yeah. know, you, he wouldn't be kind of in your, your start. Well, he hasn't been in the starting 11 in a lot of the big games, you'd yeah. say. Um, I think McLean brings a lot of work rate. Look, he's, he's a limited player, but you can't fault his heart. Um, his desire and you needed that last night he covered a ma he put in a massive shift up and down the line you know yeah. up and down the left sort of thing. Um, but I just thought it was a great performance like I mean I know like, look they had the majority of the attempts that was always going to be the case especially away from home um, it's a very good Danish team like I think we kind of underestimated them before with the match preview and we were saying you know <laughs> the only person to worry about there <laughs> yeah. forget about Delaney yeah. Um Paul, well, we did, we did, we did mention them, but we didn't really kind of look at, you know, how they finished. Like he finished second in the Bundesliga with Dortmund. Delaney did. Um, doesn't seem to be as fan of Ireland, but I think that's more of a media-driven agenda. Um, I don't think they actually really were that bothered by Ireland in regards yeah. to, uh, you know, having bad words to say. I think the media were just trying to, you know, hype that up to to, to maybe get a reaction out of our players. But uh, I thought anyway, our players. I thought they really rose to the occasion, mm -hmm. and there was some just. There was nice touches and nice moments that we had. We, we you know, just despite not having that many chances, the chances that we did get, I thought, you know, we made the most of. You know what I mean? I'm lucky to Duffy not to get the goal as well. But the yeah, whipped yeah. in ball by yeah, who were him? Great ball, but his, his set piece delivery was absolutely on point again last night. And that's another thing with Robbie, the Robbie Brady. That's why he's not kind of in your team at the moment yeah. almost because that used to be his party trick as such, you know. Yeah, exactly. But um, I thought I thought we started really well, kind of first 10, 15 minutes, passing the ball around well, composed on the ball, which is great to see. Just a little bit wary of maybe not, you know getting our hopes up too high because the bar had been set so low that even, you know, three or four of passes, course, you're going, yeah, yeah. this is really good. But they did, and they really, I thought was what was really refreshing to see was, um, you know, normally when you see McLean on the line and, you know, he goes on the outside, he gets a corner. Normally you're happy with that because there's only one man in the box. You're going, a corner is a good, a good break out of that. But we were, we, like, there was three, four men in the box and that was really refreshing to yeah. see, you know. Body's getting forward, as you say, and, uh, you know, I mean... 
I thought Hendrick had a very good game as well. Mm. I thought I actually thought man for man, everybody had a very decent game. I thought uh, McLean had a poor enough game, but as you say, he's in there disciplined with a job to do, so you can see why in attacking sense probably he didn't he wasn't that effective. Um but like realistically, what are you expecting from James McLean? You know, under maybe a goal. Um, he's not like for me, he doesn't do an awful lot for it. For yeah. like everyone's like, oh, he's the heart and his desire and stuff like that. I get that, but um, I'm just kind of I'd rather have someone in there with a bit more creativity. Bit more and stuff like that. No, yeah. no, no, I'm not. I'm not shitting on James McLean. I'm just for finally watching, thinking that. <laughs> I just think you know it's all well and good playing players with heart and desire and stuff like that. But if you have a better player, play them. That's just play them. Yeah, but I, look. Like I said, I, I would have played him in that game. I thought he was the right player for that game. I would like to see O'Dowda maybe come in for the Gibraltar game. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see a couple of changes, give a couple of people a run. Yeah, like to I think he will. So I, I just felt he had one good chance now, McLean, from the Brady pass. where slip, he, yeah. he slipped, but he went near post. He, he should have shot yeah, across the goal because yeah, exactly. even if it wasn't going in, you know, someone might have got a touch to it. And that was another situation where we where we had men following up. Like you were saying there, you know, maybe we were a bit disrespectful to Denmark by saying that Ericsson was the only difference. And I think he is the only world-class player, but it was really dawned on me the closer we got to the game. And when I looked at it, you know, it was the likes of Delaney's playing well in, in you know, the Bundesliga. You've got Pelson, again, good in the Bundesliga. I thought he was really dangerous. Ender Stevens did well, but he still got the better of him on a couple of... Yeah. More when he could inside than necessarily one-on-one -on -one against Stevens. Um, he really should have scored. In all honesty, they probably... Denmark had three big chances. I think it was Paulson, Braithwaite, and um, the forward, Jorgensen. He missed a sitter, actually, I remember. Yeah. So, and Randolph in a great save. A fantastic save yeah. from Paulson. So, well, he seems to do that in every game now. He has one yeah. massive save. But so. he's, he's, you know, massively underrated, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, saves us time and time again. I mean, you look at the games we had under O'Neill, Northern Ireland, and other games. Yeah. And people criticise him for the Wilson goal mm. in Wales. I mean, he's saved us a lot more than he's cost yeah. us points. And I think, I think people need to realise that as well. Yeah. You know, deservedly fans player of the year, in my opinion. Great season. Um, but that save, you know, that was a match winning save like, mm. type thing. You know, that was before they actually scored. Yeah. So that kept it at nil nil. He couldn't really have done anything about their goal, in, in, in fact. You know. Yeah, and I think to be fair, like, like I said, there's no shame to say probably Denmark have slightly better players than us, you know what I mean? It's fair enough, you know. But And I thought when they did score, I didn't think we could argue too much because it kind of had been coming. They'd had three yeah. chances in the kind of 15 minutes before. Well, they, we we wrote our look. And yeah, I said that in, in, in the aftermatch reaction. We, we really wrote our look at times. But you have to in these games. And look, we all said that if we could just go there and play positive, positively and get a positive result we'd be happy and I was delighted and when I seen Duffy's goal going in and uh, we'll, we'll come to that in a minute but just seeing mixed passion and you know it, you can see how much it meant to him mm -hmm. you know what I mean whereas under O'Neill you know everything was just dying off well I, I, I kind of felt that after they scored I'll be honest <laughs> I was screaming I felt like we'd score yeah, I did. I wasn't a hundred percent. I was kind of going when I saw Judge and Hogan coming on. I said, "Look, that's the difference. They've brought Heiberg and uh, Dahlberg off the bench. Two players whose careers have stalled, but were one time reckoned as like top player, young players coming through mm -hmm. in Europe." I'm sure, Heiberg was at Bayern, wasn't he? Uh, Heiberg at Bayern, and then Dahlberg was really good for Ajax, Ajax yeah. a couple of years ago. So I was kind of going, "That might be the difference." Hogan, beautiful delivery in, but even if we hadn't Judge. scored, sorry, Judge, yeah. sorry. Um, even if we hadn't a scored, I kind of had the feeling that there's a way to lose games. So if you go there, like under O'Neill, and just shut up shop and you lose 1 0, you kind of go, what's the point? Yeah. But even though we hadn't necessarily created loads of chances, the way that we tried to play, we had a go as such. So I wouldn't, I still think we could have taken positives if we hadn't got the, the equaliser, whereas I don't think we probably would have done that under O'Neill. There wouldn't be much positives yeah. to take because yeah. we would have just sat up. There's a way to lose as such, the old mm. cliche. There's a way to lose. And I think. Even if we hadn't have got the equaliser, I still would have been quite proud of how the shift the lads put in. They all worked tirelessly. Some good ball at, at times. A team like Denmark are always going to have spells where they're on top of you. Um, thought apart from Duff, Duffy's goal, some immense blocks, tackled, yeah. headed, blocked, everything that came his way. And Kyo. <laughs> Kyo, very I think, good. I think other than the goal, I don't think Kyo was a fault for anything. Mm. You probably think I've been a bit harsh. There. I just thought he was caught a little bit ball watching. But look, this is... 
elite level of professional yeah. football, you know, if you make one mistake, you get punished. And that's yeah, just yeah. that's just it. He had the run on him and the jump, so yeah, there's yeah. not a lot Kyoko could have done. I probably am being a bit harsh on that. But um it was just from watching the replay back. Um, yeah, no, I, I thought they kinda got on top in midfield. When Ericsson dropped deeper, um they kinda got in between the lines quite a bit in that fifteen, twenty minute spell. Um, yeah. when they dominated in in the second half, um, so that you know we'll have to be have to probably be wary of that a bit going forward against the likes of Switzerland. You know they'll have some quality players floating around as well. But like, it's it's hard to be overcritical of everyone because it was such a such an honest good you know such an honest performance. Yeah. You know they everybody put in a shift. Yeah, and I think the the you're talking about um you know O'Neill and and, and McCarthy. The real difference for me showed the three substitutions were all attacking. Do you know what I mean? He wasn't going. He said he was going there to win. I'll be able to get a draw, but if that was on Neil, I'd probably see a defender coming off the bench and just keep it at one nil. Yeah. Well, maybe not at one nil. I don't know about that, <laughs> but you know, uh, yeah, I think maybe it, I'm kinda, being a bit critical. Yeah, no, I think at one nil you kind of have to go for it. But, but I did think like his, his substitutions were there. Like his intent was there. He wanted to get the the equaliser no matter what. Mm-hmm. Um, and I then like. Do you think maybe someone like Callum Robinson maybe should have come off the bench a little bit earlier just to add a little bit of um, energy into our team? Because mm. you could see, like, because we'd been so, you know, pressed and high yeah. up and so you could see us fading off, yeah, especially yeah, the first yeah. half there was a period where we were really on top and then we just kind of started fading and they were getting chances. And as I say, we rolled our luck, but then kind of taking it into the second half, they were just, they were dominant. They were they were superior in the, in the second half. But... um. You know, as I said, the substitutions that came on, I thought George was really well. He obviously won the foul um, and su- su- supplied a beautiful cross. And, you know, Shane Duffy. Yeah, oh, stuff. Called it by the way. Mystic Paul. Did you go to Bucky's? No, but I should have. I should, really should have. Yeah. I, I wonder what Shane Duffy and uh, any time and one all would have been because I had called it. But uh, look, it's, it, it's that classic example with Duffy, isn't it? Like, they, I think the Danes are even saying, like, their main threat is going to be Shane Duffy from corners. Like you can practice all week, but when Shane gets up in the air, you know, yeah, he's a scary you're, not, man, you're, like. you're not you're not going to get to him. But I thought one thing that was actually really refreshing towards the end of the game was we scored the eighty fifth minute, and you're there going here. I'm going to be watching the rest of this from behind the couch. You know, they're going to be yeah. firing the ball in. But like the last three, the last few minutes of injury time, it was us pushing on. Like, yeah. and I think. There was a couple of times with a bit more composure we could have actually got in, like you know. Yeah. There was that, that McLean one when you probably had to lift it over Schmeichel, um. But yeah, a cu- couple of occasions we, um, yeah, I think with a bit more composure we could have even nicked it at the end. That's not to say was it you know, Hogan or something? I remember the chance. Yeah, yeah. there was. Yeah, there was. It's kind of broken. A couple well. of sore heads. <laughs> yeah, there, just... Shane Shane Duffy induced hangovers. Thanks, Shane. But um. Yeah, no, just really refreshing to to see them finish like that. And that's not to say you know we'd be. Wearing very green uh, tinted spectacles, if we were to say Ireland deserved to win that oh, game because no, we, we didn't. You look you know, at the attempts. At one point, it was eighteen to four. Same amount as the five one game, huh? Really? Yeah, just shows the difference, you know. But like, oh, one thing I really want to touch on was that little prick off Denmark kicking the ball to Hendrick. But I loved. Seamus was straight in, yeah. Oh, but he grabbed it with a neck. I <laughs> thought I thought Seamus showed himself to, you know, it's a very kind of. People's fo- proper football manny or whatever, but like he was berating Robbie Brady just before Brady get, got taken off. Did you see that, Seamus Coleman? No. He was eating the head off him about something. I don't know if he didn't pass the ball. I don't know exactly what happened, but I thought, you know, that was kind of, we were talking on the preview show, preview show about Darty and the Darty and she- Seamus Coleman conundrum at right back. And it's, you know, I think you can talk about it all day, read into it. it it's just a very unlucky situation, but I thought Shane. Seamus Coleman showed last night. He didn't have a spectacular game, but the way he was cajoling players, pulling people into place, he showed real leadership skill, skills yesterday, I thought. And that's one thing I think that really stands to us in that team is you do have some big characters like Duffy and like Seamus mm, Coleman. Kjolder. Exactly, yeah. And uh, I thought McGoldrick, I've often said to my mates, like playing up front for Ireland is probably one of the worst jobs in football because, you know, you have to... You have to do a lot of donkey yeah. work without yeah. a lot of support, particularly away from home. But I thought it was a couple of times he, he didn't hold the ball up great, but he did at times. And I thought like Christensen and Carr are two top quality centre backs, mm. and he gave them a real Carr looked lost his composure a few times. I thought, and 
he, he ran the channels, just a, a really like a workman like performance, but just a, a, you need your front man to put that in that kind of shift in in a big mm. away game. And fair it's, play just, it's, it's just it's just the thing is like if, if anything does happen to him going forward, I think he'd be a huge loss. It's just a shame he's not like two years younger, to be honest. I know he had injuries and stuff like that as well, mm. but uh, he's just been a real breath of fresh air. Mm. And you know, we're sitting here a year ago, um, well, not <laughs> not us, but yeah. sitting here chatting about you know strikers and stuff like that and going like where are we gonna? and we had one all along mm. but he for whatever reason wasn't getting picked and he's had a great season and hopefully he kicks on now again next season and, and does well with Sheffield United but I just um I just think he's a he's a really important player for us yeah you know especially this campaign I think he's going to be really and the fact that Mick knows him so well and get, can get the best of him is really good as well I, I think he just probably has a little bit more Physical presence for that lone striker role than Shane Long. Yeah, um, and but I he's good at dropping. He's a good player. He's a good footballer. Yeah, he's an intelligent footballer, no doubt about it. Um, I I'd lo- love to see him get a couple of goals against Gibraltar just to bump his confidence up or whatever. Because yeah, that yeah, that yeah, would be yeah. you know kind of if you were to you know look at it, you know kind of look for points that we need to improve on in the game. You could say maybe we didn't really look like scoring from open play a lot. Yeah. Um, we did have a couple of chances. Couple of yeah. chances, yeah. But you know, I I just thought not clinical enough n- at all. No, and the final ball that was you know the final third maybe the qual- lack of quality there a couple of times. <coughs> but um, I'd love to see him just to get his confidence up, get his first couple of goals for Ireland, and he you know just think about it. You know, I think we in the wider context as well. We're what is it now like five points ahead of Denmark? They beat Georgia at home. We beat Gibraltar at home. I know they have a game in hand, but that's a great start. Yeah. Three Swi- games, three goals. Switzerland come to face us now in in September, October. Yeah. Uh, at the Aviva, and we will be we'll be six points ahead of them. So they'll be under pressure. Like if we were to beat Switzerland at home, we're in a serious position. I think position we could in be group, pushing a look in, in that, but I mean, there's no harm in being positive. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just think Switzerland. I think the best we'll get there, and I hope I'm wrong, is a draw. Um, I hope I'm wrong. Like if we beat them, I'll be the happiest man yeah. in the world. Do you know what I mean? But I'm just trying to be a little bit realistic at the same time. It's just, but then again, as you say, you know, Christian Eriksen is probably the best player in the group, in the whole group, and we kept him quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you look around their team: Rodriguez, left back, Shakiri. Other than that, no one really stands no, in no. my mind. No, no. I, I'd again, we're not being disrespectful to Switzerland or anything like that. Like people thought we were with the, Denmark, but. I'm just saying, from uh, an Irish point of view, there's no one really I fear. Yeah, I think uh, considering that we're we're at home, I think in a group like this, in a way, against the two big rivals, you know, against Switzerland and Denmark, a point's a fantastic result. And I don't see why we can't, I'm not saying we're going to go out and play Switzerland off the park or, you know, win 3-0, but I can't see why we can't go in there thinking at home with the crowd behind us, we can't, because like, it's such motivation. If we win that game, like we'll go nine points clear of them. Okay, they yeah. have two games in hand, but like serious motivation for us. And you Big know, time. if we go a goal ahead, the pressure will be on them, kind of thing. Like, so why not? Even if we got a draw, it's not the worst result in the world, you know. So absolutely, um, and it's it's one of those things as well. It's like you look and go, you know, can we? You maybe get you know, ride our luck again, or you know, I mean, but the last two games must give you know Irish fans a bit of hope. Uh, for the future anyway but uh, I think we'll we'll wrap it up on that that's been the final word um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and uh, like the video if you like it as well leave your thoughts in the comments uh, how do you think we performed last night uh, huge thanks to Peter from fo- footballfaithful.com go and check him out and give him a follow on Twitter as well thank you very much for watching we'll speak to you soon